I don't want to hear any more of these lies about reckless spending. We're changing people's lives. Yeah, yeah, Mr. President, for the worse. Joining me now to help Biden get out of the soup is Liz Peake, syndicated columnist and Fox News contributor, and Matt Schlapp, CPAC chairman and author of The Desecrators. Welcome, Matt Schlapp on set. Liz, as always. So, Matt, in honor of your being on set, what's he talking about? <laughs> He's yelling, there's no spending, he's changing people's lives. Do you think people today, serious question, do you think folks today think their lives are better after a year and a half, Mr. Biden? So, you know, Larry, I'm a political guy. I'll let you do the economics. You and Liz can do that. All I'm going to tell you is I'm looking at these polls. We can say independents, he's lost them clearly, but even Democrats, look, Everyone's filling up that car with gas or that truck with diesel. Everyone's trying to scrounge around to find baby formula. Everyone's spending too many dollars for a half a gallon of milk. This is hitting everybody. It's really hitting Democrats. And I think what's very interesting is what's going on with blacks and Hispanics who are feeling the pinch mightily. By the way, they don't like all this messing around with gender and their boys and everything else. There's a lot at play here. But Joe Biden has lost the moment that he had. Remember, he could reset it. He was going to come in and bring things back to normal. And instead, he broke it all. And it's like the Colin Powell thing. It's his. He's got to fix it. And he can't. You know, Liz, it's an interesting thought. Um, going back, you, you're watching his presidency shrink to nothing, in a sense, dissolve. His own party doesn't want to nominate him, according to all these news reports. Um, did it start in Afghanistan? Was that sort of the beginning of the end? I, I wasn't going to raise this, but because of what Matt said, was it Afghanistan, the catastrophe there that started his decline? Yes. Uh, if you look at the polling on his honesty, for example, when he took office, oh. he was above board on honesty. Mm. More people thought he was honest than dishonest by like 10 or 11 points, quite a lot, quite a big gap. Now he went underwater. He's now underwater by about seven points, and the lines cross literally the day that the embassy in Kabul fell, mm. or that we evacuated our embassy, mm. I should say. Uh, but I think also at that time, that don't forget how early inflation began to show up. It was like in May, June, July, August last, last summer, a lot of us were writing about, whoa, what's happening here, this $2 trillion American rescue plan that he is defensive about now, uh, indeed tipped the balance, and we had too much uh, money floating around in the economy and too few goods, and indeed uh, prices started to go up. So I think it was both of those things pretty much simultaneously. But in Afghanistan, he lied to the American people right. about something we care desperately about, which is our military. He should never have done that. Uh, his own people contradicted him. Milley and Lloyd Austin, that's pretty shocking. No, no, it's a great point. It's an important point. Matt, also, I think um, Biden lost out very badly on the parental rights in the schools. Yeah, okay, for he sure. And Merritt Garland and his people That's right. basically defended the school boards and the teachers' union. It's funny, not Worse only on the that. specific issues, that. but just on the being. Yes, words, right. The idea that they're domestic terrorists, really? They're parents. You're right. That's the key that I think when he allowed his administration was pitched this idea, we need you to call them domestic terrorists, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, the AG, our attorney general, is supposed to be outside of politics. He played politics as bad as I've ever seen it. It was odious. Called parents domestic terrorists. That whole revolution, that revolt, really, that happened in the Commonwealth of Virginia spoke to the woke. So I agree with Liz on the bungling on you know, three legs of the stool, bungling on Afghanistan, inflation, bad economic policies. But this culture piece, this idea that you can't love America, warts and all with all of our mistakes and all of our history, but you can't love America. Wear a, a red tie on Flag Day, that you can't be a booster of cops or the military. That somehow shows that you're anti intellectual or not in the modern moment. Where did Joe Biden get to the point where he's with the Gene Kirkpatrick, they always blame America first crowd? Mm. That's not going to sell in the long run, I hope, if we're to have a future. And Liz, uh, the other point I want to ask about he continued, I mean, you saw it today in Philadelphia, the AFL CIO. He continues to deny any culpability 
for the inflation, right. which is affecting every middle class person. He claims to be the representative of the unions. I mean, union folks, like the rest of the blue collars, are getting killed by this. And now, Liz, as you know, stocks are coming down big time, so the whole retirement account thing's coming down. He will not take any responsibility. Well, and moreover, I haven't heard him say anything about the crashing stock market. We're now in a bear market. That's not every day that that happens. People are seeing their IRAs and their 10 and their 401ks and so just get eaten alive. I, I'm really shocked that they're, this is supposed to be our empathetic president, right? He's supposed to feel our pain. He's not feeling my pain. I'm feeling my pain, but I don't, haven't heard anything about Biden. On Madam this. Saki said before she left to, I think, MSNBC, plus, minus, whatever. Madam <laughs> Saki, that was a joke. Madam <laughs> Saki, I apologize. Madam Saki said they don't watch the stock market. Yeah. Now, I will tell you anecdotally, uh, for three years, I walked into the Oval Office quite a few times, and every single time, he would say, how, how are stocks? But it's not that it was manic. Stocks are an indicator, to right. a large extent, right. of our health and our wealth and so forth and so on. Now, they don't watch the stock market. Matt, yeah, that's... you watch the stock market? You do now after talking to me. But well, actually, Mercy, yeah. Mercy was there after the... when he was asked about the stock market. Larry, after the last two weeks, I actually am not watching the yeah, stock exactly. market because <laughs> I, I need to take a Tums <laughs> or something afterwards. But no, the point is, is this. There's a, in the White House, and you, you both know this, but you, when things go really, really bad, and Trump didn't have those moments where the economy was a disaster or they were so incompetent. But, you know, the, some of those Bush days, it was rough. And, um, and you get this insular feeling of, you know what, we're just doing our thing. We're going to block out the outside world. And uh, it, that's a scary thing for mm. presidents because you can really start to go haywire with your decision making. I think the worrisome thing is Joe Biden still believes we need to flush the economy with Build Back Better. Yeah, I know. How can you think I know. That? He wants it. He wants it. It's, it's a lot of word. Liz, I'm going to give you the last word. Will Biden blame the bear market and stocks on Vladimir Putin? I don't know. It's extremely <laughs> hard to imagine huh? how. I, I, don't, I don't think he can do that, but he'll try. He will what try. he will do, he'll go on a tour saying, we have reduced inequality in America. And they are, because everyone's getting poorer, and the <laughs> right. people who have money are getting poorer faster. So that's a big accomplishment for this president. Liz Peake ladling that soup <laughs> right out. It's fantastic. Liz Peake and Matt Schlapp. Matt, thank you. It's wonderful to see you up here on set. Great to see you again.